All right, let's start things off. Flixy and Janice landing at Reckless Railways. I'm probably going to skip a bunch of like the early game. They're uncontested. They're not fighting anyone off spawn. Uh, but yeah, now you know where they land. All right, team contesting them. Immediate height from Flixy. Good start. I've seen Flixy and Janice before uh, fighting. And a lot of times they are just like keeping their distances and spraying from some really good angles. Uh, they're not often a team who gets like way too involved and jumps straight into the box. Straight away, a good start. Flixie is obviously a really good fighter, despite the fact he lost to Poop. Now it's 2v1. Pretty easy reason to jump straight in. I liked, even there, you can see that just because the, the other player is weak, he still manages to keep his distance, and is still just, like, spamming. He's not allowing, like, the other player just to run straight in his face, because the other player could have an auto shotgun, and they could trade back in return. So he did take a, a bunch of damage in return, and it looks like a super simple fight, but the fact that they kept their distance, like, at least a tile away is something that's, like, super critical. One thing we always see with teams uh, that are landing, basically going for forecast, is getting as early as possible, building up the same style base. Like, almost every single team that you see going for forecast does this exact same thing uh three boxes there they're basically really only fighting for it from the teams who are landing like in this area they're fully uncon which would seem like in this game we'll see obviously if anyone pushes in but the chances are usually from what i've seen uh from flixing janice they're not the first teams there it usually are beaten by like uh, vico and pink and when it comes to like finals i think this fight will be really interesting to watch if janice and flixy both go against uh what, did i say them right pink and vico I did, yes, yeah, uh, in finals, because, like, that's that's two spicy fighting half-German teams going against each other. But see, easy enough, you box it up because they all spawn there, easy elims, and you're out. It's not rocket science, but, again, this is two weeks in a row that the teams that have won have both been forecast teams. And this forecast tower, as probably everyone knows at this point, is 100% spawn rate, so, you know, it's not rocket science to figure out that forecast equals good. <laughs> uh. They start to get sprayed. Uh, Janice is already weak off the rip, so I like that they're immediately going to be going defensive. Boxing up on the train is, is an interesting play. Obviously, I don't know if they've checked how far away the train is going to push into them or not, but I think that team ends up disengaging. Again, same thing as that we watched last week. Almost every single team is doing the exact same thing. Harvesting gold, buying big pots, or buying med kits. One of the two. Uh, so Flixie's got three bigs, three med kits. Janice has one big, three med kits already trying to set up for the win. Now, again, they don't win this game. They do come second. So off the rip, something goes wrong because they're set up perfectly. Forecast, god loot, med kits to win, heal off, everything. Grapples early game, sniped. They've obviously got the medallion, so you can just wait. I like that something super minor there. But he gets sniped and immediately starts peeking through cones to try and gain advantage. Not advantage, like the, the vision. Because... In that situation, like, they could easily key. You never know who this team is. They could be a good team. They could be not. They've cracked you for 100 there. Uh, and the first thing that Flixie does instinctively is to look through his cone to see if they're keying. Because if they end up W keying straight into you, you have to pop your big pot straight away. Whereas if they're staying at their distance, you can just wait for your medallion to heal you up to 50 shield and then pop another big after that. Or just wait, depending on obviously what, what they want to do here. So just that slight little bit of, like, patience is really good. Heavily, heavily aggression straight towards Loot Island. All right, Flix and Janice go straight up, basically just for mats. I'm guessing they're just going to stay up here uh, and either rift or use the launch pad to go. I've seen a lot of teams uh, staying up here relatively early and then using Flowberries and the launch pad to go straight into sixth zone because you go much further than if you use the rift. Like we saw that with Reet and Ritual last week as well. So we'll see. All right, interesting. They just jump straight down. So they're only going straight up to the island just for materials. So it didn't seem like they're looking to rift or anything maybe they're hoping for like a good zone but i think one of the problems with this is now that you put yourself in a position where so many people are, are in the same area because so many people situate themselves underneath loot island just to use uh the rifts that were there and to reuse them so it's it's, it's pretty risky but again i guess if you're flixy and janice you can just go for the elims on those players which you can kind of take advantage of a more congested zone i love flixy's obviously he's got the knock the full finish is down there too but he just says, right, a full duo's jumped on me. Like, we don't need the loot that much. Jumps right out. Because at this point, like, they're so stacked. There's no need for them to, like, fully overcommit. Like, this is a this is a solo. You can jump straight in. But if there's a duo full health down below, it's pro not probably definitely not worth going for. I like that. Again, they went straight under Loot Island, as we said earlier. Allows them to rift. They've done this relatively late. So they can obviously fly deeper into zone. Get straight into dead side, as we'll see where they land. Uh, tanking a little bit of Storm Surge. Uh, Storm Surge Surge damage there. Totally worth it to get this kind of positioning. And remember, again, they have forecast, so they know where this next zone's pulling. So getting themselves this deep into zone means that they're guaranteed to, to basically pull the next zone already. 
It's a shame that this kind of playstyle isn't something that a lot of people will be able to do because the reality is a lot of people are not able to get forecast every single game, right? A lot of people just are not good enough to get forecast every single game. Um, so it's like this playstyle is kind of secured for like the elite of elite. Of course, then they pull the next zone. So now they know where the eighth zone is as well. Um, it was good. And also this positioning on zone here is really, really nice. Um, if you know anything about this, this is the same last chapter where you're in this kind of corner. So... If you remember, this zone opens up like this here, and this zone will open up like this when players are rotating in. So by positioning yourselves on these corners, you can spray and hold people here to keep them off of dead side. So obviously this is dead side. If you spray the players rotating in here, that means you've kind of got them, you kind of free up this area for yourself to kind of rotate further into. This is something like Kamiseti do a lot. A lot of like the best pro players take these kind of positions as early as possible and then try and hold the players out from it. Um, we'll see if they end up doing that or not, um, because obviously they have forecast, so they know where the next zone actually pulls, so it might be better to put themselves in that position instead. Um, but again, something that's super valuable to know if you kind of pull those positions early, or pull those zones early. All right, they see a team sitting next to them in Brick. I don't know what made them go for the play. He was only 4 HP, so I don't know if they heard them getting cracked. That's a free refresh, and again, getting a refresh like this right before the moving zones means that you don't have any awkward and, like, you don't get sprayed usually through the first and second moving zones because you can continue building hards and you don't have to focus on getting elims you can just focus on your rotates so immediately like getting a, a refresh before moving zones so so good janice gets beamed out of the sky and i like what flixie does straight away which is just to get to him right like if you watched uh some mid-tier players they'll more focus on getting themselves ahead getting themselves into a good position whereas if your teammate is like weak and low you have to ensure that you're trying to still stick with them and getting them healed uh because like he's then created a tarp there like flixie's just giving himself space that Janice can heal and move in. And that's particularly true now with the moving heals, right? Which means it's good. They don't go for it. They end up dropping down. Immediately elevate themselves off because there was a little bit of congestion on that layer, which I really, really liked. So just that slow landed low and then immediately ramped up a couple bits just to get a little bit higher. And Flixie's just killing people without me even able to see what's happening. I'm pro I'll watch this from Flixie's POV because he is obviously probably going to get the most amount of elims. And that's entertaining. That's why we watch this game. All right, Janice has taken the look up to height. Sees their own wood. Again, that means they're probably low mats. You can fight for it. They're not going to have as many mats to be able to fight. Ooh, that guy's got a lovely cone. Flixie's managed to get out with the edits a little bit, though. And they get straight up, yeah. Again, if you see players on height, in wood, either they suck or they don't have many materials. So if you have plenty of mats, you can easily spray them off uh, and get plenty of... Uh, basically, you'll be able to fight them for height and win it. It's almost like a guarantee every time. Don't know what the hell that guy's doing backside of his own. And now with forecast and on height, they can keep continually get themselves like up ahead of zone. Um, the one good thing about having forecast up on top of height is that you always know where the next zone's pulling. So you can kind of predict ahead of time uh, and pre-tarp like for the first zone if it pulls back, if that makes sense. If it pulls far, you can obviously try and get yourself deeper onto the further side as well, which is really nice. And I think at this point, it is just going to be an absolute spray fest. But remember, they come second this game. They do not win. So how? They drop the med kit. So there's only two med kits to play heal off. And Janice is actually just... Yeah, he's only got two left. So he's only got two. So that's like 20 seconds of heal off, which is not that much time. And I think this is a really good play from Flexi just to drop down onto low ground at that point. Like, he has to try and frag out. They know they probably don't have enough heals to win. So it's Flexi's job to go down and try and disrupt everyone else trying to play heal off. Obviously, they also get a bunch more elim points, hopefully, at the same time as well. Let's see. Still got the two main kids up above. Enough mats to kind of play out to the end game. It's all... Uh, is it all two of us? No, no, no. One solo and one duo. Still got the two main kids playing up above. Nice kill from Flixie that obviously I just missed. So now it's a 2v2. He has plenty of mats. They have everything set up to win outside of maybe a little bit of heal off. So where does the, where does the milk come in here potentially? Ooh, the crash pad play from the enemy is nice. And again, nice. Okay, now it's a 1v2. Flixie goes down. Two medkits. Nice, to got a tag off already. And this just might be it. Just the two medkits probably is not enough to win. Mappy's also got two medkits, so how the hell does he lose this? Huh? How do you lose this? Oh, he's just got slightly more HP. Dang, that's unfortunate. 
just just less a bit of white there yeah and then janice has to go in sees the med kit doesn't get the timing right if only he had esp and he'd be able to win there that's unfortunate oh wait oh sorry there's god of lavish god of lavish 2 and king of lavish <laughs> okay who are the who are the, the the kings of lavish no who are the gods of lavish sorry this guy is a, <laughs> this is the worst teammate i've ever seen bro your duo is getting 1v2'd <laughs> bro <laughs> bro why every single time we open oce finals do i see some stuff like this this guy that has got to be the worst teammate i have literally ever seen in my life if if i'm playing ranked with someone who does this I'm I'm just leaving. Like I'm backing out. Max zone. They choose to instantly rotate. The beauty of being more on the north side. I mean, this is a very OCE map right here. <laughs> like everyone on the south side, uh, because they've all late rotated, and then just like one good team or a couple good teams who've got up late. And I think that's an interesting play just to sit straight on edge. Firstly, they should go a little bit deeper. Uh, should they go a little bit deeper in here? Let me see. Yeah, they definitely should. Um, the the issue here is when you play so close to edge like right on the edge like that so many of these teams could rotate and of course like there were it's not as bad because they're on the north side uh so there's obviously not gonna be as many teams come behind them but say from here they get like a max zone pool i can't move this map without playing it it's so annoying so that bug's been in for ages so they get a max zone pool and all these teams end up getting stuck with them they're they're absolutely messed so like moving a little bit deeper in it allows you to not get stuck with all these other teams. The problem in this situation is that there's so many hills here, right? There's a team here, and there's a team up on that hill. But if I was them, I would be 100% going down here and boxing up either in this area or a little bit higher. Even just on that brick, like, they don't need surge or anything. That's not a great spot, to be honest, by any means. But, like, going a little bit deeper into this zone means that you stay away from any potential teams going behind them. Okay, now that the zone's closed, it's not been that bad again because like i think this is another oce thing but like because obviously all the congestion was on the south side now it's all ended up here which means like for them like their position is fine it's not really that bad but see how there's so many teams that have ended up going onto this hill imagine if those teams had rotated this way instead they'd be in such serious congestion so where's this next one pull and it pulls that way so they've got they've got a pretty good rotate anyway they don't have a forecast um now from here what i'd like to see them do is as again we kind of mentioned in the previous game you cut off through this side when it opens up. Uh, now, if these teams here are smart, they'll do what we talked about in the previous match, where they can sit and hold any teams coming in here, preventing them going on dead side. We'll see. Actually, that's a really good point. They don't have grapples, so let's see how they play this one out. So you have to kind of be even more careful. Create it. Not a pre it play. They just look to get in. That may look like a stupid play, uh, but they're both running the mythic auto and then the purple auto. So to double pickaxe through a wall actually is not that bad of a play. It's risky, uh, it's not something I would definitely do ever, but it's not like as stupid as it may initially seem. Hopefully, as you can see, again, for them, because they're on dead side, they can either, they can probably just white line or go straight across. It's a little risky to go really far onto dead side because you become like a bit of a lobby focus, but their timing here is going to be important. Fizz, instantly, they don't jump, which I like, because then they don't get stuck in the air for too long, so they just use that to drop. Giat Master 1991. <laughs> Uh, there's the benefit again like if you're using the fizz you can build you can shoot while rotating the problem with like grapplers in a sense is that you can't um but danith does still pick one up anyway it's still better to use grapplers but like if you have fizz like you can still do some really interesting things like i said you those guys didn't stay all the way up into the sky they ended up just like dropping straight down because a lot of people in that situation, they're up on a high layer, they jump, stay in the air, and they instantly die. And they go, oh, it's so bad using these. However, you can drop down onto lower layers and just still use them to rotate really quickly. All right, getting aggressive. Again, the double auto means they can't just be dumb and jump straight into box, right? Do they not? Again, covered the top. They've covered their angles before going out, which is super useful. Fizzed. Again, they don't jump. Notice how they just drop straight down and then start jumping so they're not too high in the sky. Good layering, staggering for a bit. They could probably look back for some elims here. But they don't. They decide just to keep going. That's fine. Playing it safe. They're choosing really good paths. Like, notice they're, where they're jumping is beside old builds, right? Where they're, like, cutting off line of sight from anyone rotating at the same time. Which is really nice. Drop down. This tree's going to cut me off. 
Blocking his back. Now they've got themselves a nice lair. Team's on their lair, so they have to immediately be careful. The question is, are they going to go cut them off? Yep, they're going to start to immediately go to box fight them. Pre-edit play. Pre-edit playing when you both have double autos is disgusting. Rift immediately gets taken out. Like, your box fighting style when you're both running autos is so annoying. Like, this is a, a play style that Queezy and Thomas is kind of doing right now. Uh, given Thomas, uh, the mythic auto is absolutely devastating. But like, genuinely, if you have someone with good aim and this mythic auto shotgun, if you're within one tile of them, they are just dead. Like, you're not winning that fight. It's over. Especially in like, laggy in-game lobbies. Now, this tree is really ruining my visibility here. All right, let's see. Same thing again. Jump front side. When they get shot, they can build. Cover. And this is, again, what I mean. Like, they're, you're... Without a grapple, it's fine. As long as you have... Uh, as long as you have the juice. Without that, it is bad. But All right. A couple people more in their lair. They're in a bit of an awkward situation here. They're close to height, so they look to spray out. It's on double wood. As we mentioned, wood high ground usually means they don't have much HP. I love that he ended up going back... Oh, okay, that was a little dodgy. I was going to say, I love how they went back into the backside of zone and double pinch there. That's one person down from height. The other person, remember, was on wood, so even if they'd stayed on height, it would have been rough. And now they've been chopped. They need to give it up because he's got no mats. Okay. Gets back together. Danath has... Danath. Uh, Danath's not the words yet. Has some mats. That is one of the problems with doing a, a zone from uh, play from backside onto height is that like the front side of zone can just spray you out as well. Another easy kill. Picked up another auto. <laughs> He's got two autos, baby. <laughs> right back to no mats. And again, like now that these these teams are dangerous when you have no mats and two auto shotguns. Like guys land next to you. Oh, the little whiff. And that's the thing. Even despite the fact that he whiffed with the, the grapple blade, he's still able to win the fight because the auto is so goddamn strong. Let's see. And again, in, oh, shotgun, dead. And, like, the thing is, obviously, like, I'm getting real. These players that he's playing up against, like, Mr. Jellybean, I'm sorry, but Mr. Jellybean, he's not cooking that much. He's, this isn't, like, a Vino or a Tayson. But if you both run at people in endgame, laggy situations... With a double auto, like, you're getting some elims. Backside zone, 20, 20. Guy's dead. No problem. And 2v2 left. Anyone got... It's, what, how long we got left? 30 seconds. This is almost definitely not going to heal off. This team would win heal off, but they have no mats. So this team's just kind of obviously not... They're going to have to jump down. And they're going to lose. We already know they're going to lose. They will control. You can see they got the mats. Drop them down. It's like the freest win ever there. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Jow and Brian, Brian V. Brian V. These two get some difficult to pronounce names. Sorry, Brazil region, for butchering your best players. Ah, they are a train team. Interesting. Nope. <laughs> oh, well, they are not a train team, it would seem like. They are both playing double grapple as well. Minimal amount of shields, like one uh, one juice and three things between them, but I guess that's what happens when you play uh, double grapple and sniper. <laughs> Bro, I love this. I swear to God, right? This stuff... I wish these things would pop off screen. This kind of stuff looks so troll. Like, it genuinely looks so troll. Like, you, you look at them and you're like, what are these guys doing? But I'll tell you, this works. I don't know if anyone will rotate into this house, okay? But this stuff genuinely, like, is one of the most frustrating things you can come across because it works. Now, it doesn't work if you need Storm Surge. Of course, like, if you need to, to pump out damage, it doesn't work. But if you have cap mats, capped heals, like, you have an inventory of everything. If you box up, there's a you run the risk of getting fought. But if you just sit in a corner with auto shotguns <laughs> like <laughs> hmm, not much can go wrong i say that but i mean maybe something will go wrong uh but yeah genuinely sitting in a, in a building with your shotguns out heavily underrated the problem with this is that again it's a south zone and everyone's rotates into the pois because they can re-harvest but as you can see that creates like a massive cluster of players so their next rotate may be a little bit questionable i actually this sounds super dumb but i really like this okay uh, team sitting at the edge of this, or potentially a team here, right? They don't know because there's a box there. And these zip lines are an absolute death wish. 
So I really, really like. They jump on, see that there's a team there, and he immediately jumps off. And he's like, don't do that. Use, uh, obviously, because they could just get beamed straight away. Use the grapple blade to go straight up. And you can see he's looking to the left to avoid, and then there's no one there. Looks like a very minimal thing that's like not very important. Um, but small little decisions like that, to me, show that these guys are really safe. Like they're they're clearly very much so thinking about who's around them, what like what angles can they get shot from as they're rotating. Uh, and again, with their kind of match history, like that doesn't surprise me that they're playing that level like that carefully. You know, similar to what we said before, tricky situation. All these players have rotated in. They are the team that's like the furthest forward. Yeah, so they're the team who's like the furthest forward. This is kind of what I'm. This is kind of what I was talking about uh, in the previous region. These guys. I imagine these guys die early this game, unless the zone pulls here, of course. But now, say if they pull a max distance zone, because these guys are a little bit further away from the edge, like they're not in this position, they're here. They have no one holding them. They could just run first. Obviously, they get shot by maybe they get shot by everyone in the back, but it, they don't have to walk through a bunch of teams. So that little bit of distancing yourself away from the edge really adds up. Uh, Brian switched. He's managed to. He's actually dropped the sniper now that they're going into end game, and now they have a late rotate. So this is going to be kind of scuffed. Okay, again being beamed in the back. I love. Love that Brini goes back again, like we talked about earlier, and builds a box for Zhao there. He makes sure his teammate is safe and he has the chance to heal, right? Because there's a team behind them. He's not just like running ahead and fucking leaving him behind as we see all the time, right? I think they're kind of blessed by the fact that the zone pulls down here and so many teams have dropped down and that they're not being held on this rotate, right? Love the high play. Nice, okay. This is a this is a bit of a, a case of like small region syndrome. Where on a higher, like on a better region, someone would be on height here, you know? What's the rotation plan here? What's it looking like? That's a tough, uh, there's not actually that many teams there. I mean, it's a tough one from them because they don't have like visibility. Everyone is below them. So the tricky thing about this rotate is if they use their grapple blades straight away, they have a high likelihood of getting shot in the back by players using the berry, or the berry uh, using the juice. They've juiced. I think I might just be just to heal. Again, if they're going to juice from here, you don't want to jump. They look like they're going grappler. If they spray too many people, they're going to become a target where people are going to look back. Nice. Risky. Very risky. Okay. So they decided to juice and jump grapple. The problem with that is kind of what we talked about in the end game of the previous game. Jesus, that's aggressive. Just going straight for height. Okay. What we talked about the end game in the last game is when you jump using the juice from a high layer, you're in the air for so long, they really put themselves at risk of being beamed by that team in front of them if they were paying attention. Um, which could, like, that could lose you the game right there straight away. That's why I said that would be a really tricky rotate generally. I'm not sure entirely what the best play was there because that is, like, that's not, that's not an easy rotate, full stop. When you have the whole lobby with you, you know? Right, love that they connected. In particular, like, if you're at the back side of zone in a good region uh, and a team is at front side, they are building up on height. Like, it's kind of... You would not never be able to get this many free height retakes. Uh, ever. Like, of course, King and, and um, <clears throat> Phaser have left the region and they were, like, the biggest height team. So I think, like, from what I understand about Brazil is that King and Phaser were, like, one of the only height teams. I could be very wrong on this. I'm not an expert. Um, and now that they've left, like, you know, the, the whole region has kind of just been conditioned to not go for height for so long. Uh, so now these guys have basically just, like, freed it up. I don't hold me to that. I'm really not a Brazil expert, so. Okay. Now is it just a, a classic case of just spraying? I'm more interested in what the back player does. They're keeping such a good distance. Now, the thing is for this, I think they're actually, this might sound a bit crazy, but still a little too low. Uh, so my concern here, right, is that any of these height teams or any of the teams sneaking up at the back here, like this guy who, well, he's obviously just healing off in the storm, but probably not. Say this guy underneath. He's got good angles covering it, so potentially not. But at this distance, you can still get grapple bladed on really, really easily from there. So I would, height's a little strange. I've, I've not watched enough height teams this season to see how the best teams are really doing it yet. But anyone can just like fire straight up and grapple and kill you from the backside, um, which is... A lot more risky so what i'd prefer to see is that jow was playing like a double height has he got mats for it like if he was just playing up above yeah he's got 80 builds still like 80 and 38 they've got enough to like wood uh tarp higher to prevent that from happening and then brian uh, brian branny i'm gonna pronounce his name wrong every single time preferably he would be 
ensuring his main focus is on looking back like this because he's obviously they're doing a good job of staying ahead and looking back uh but to watch and ensure that no one's like spraying up behind right so it's like your front players looking back your back players look in front if that makes sense again i'm not 100 percent sure on how the best teams are playing height this season in particular i haven't watched one thing I, I, I've, I've pointed this out about so many high teams in the past, I love that the fact that they're sticking so much to the edge. This is a very like Queasy and Vino-esque uh, height style where they're always staying to one side. So that means if they're, say you're at the back side of zone here, as they kind of are, and you're right on the side, from his POV, right? Go back to his POV. He can see almost the entire lobby, right? And the same thing would be true if you were at front side on this side, right? Because you're getting like a right-hand peek off of the edge of your height. So, love it. There's still a lot of amateur teams that I see that just tarp down the middle, uh, which can work on earlier zones because it's wider. But again, it's harder just to take like cold height on earlier zones. But when you're coming to like these earlier last few moving zones, holding it at the edge like that gives you such a better one. Better uh, visibility. And how many made kits they got to heal off? Again, they are so set up for it. Six medkits on high ground, immediately much better than the, the OCE team that we just watched before, Dana's team. And of course now, he's set up for heal off on height. Zhao drops down just to play like the aggressive. The goal, obviously, the points are good for Elims, but the point is to mainly disrupt their heal off as much as possible. Like, this is like another very classic Queasy Vino thing. Where, obviously, you drop, you, you lower your like best fragger to try and just dunk on him as much as possible. He has nothing, so even if they give them that Elim, it doesn't matter, all right? Like, they're not going to get mats from it outside of the siphon mats. They're not getting whites. They're not getting shields. He's already got nothing left in his inventory, so... And now this is pulling back over old builds. He has no mats, but it doesn't matter. He can go into the olds, play heal off. The team's down below. One med kit. Sorry to, sorry to be the bearer of bad news, mate. Or two. Sorry to be the bad news, but you're not winning. So really well executed. Again, I think this win overall, because it's the Brazil region and almost no one looked up at height for the entire moving zone, no one established height for like the entire game, was kind of gifted to them in a sense, but you, you play the lobby you're given, right? If you're given a, a lobby with free height and you're the aggressive team, you can have an insane match history like this. So well played. Kicking it off with Asia. We got Delta, LB Works and Nature. I'm just going to call them Nature, even though that is the org. Let's see. Let's see. Going to see popular at all? Hell yeah. Okay. Okay. I like that cone edit just to protect against because I guess that brick on the, the metal on the right's not theirs. Yeah, it's not. I think a lot of those those kind of cone edits are really underutilized. Like a single tile. A single tile can allow you, like if you're if you're say on a higher layer, you edit out and you've got a cone on outside your box and you edit like a floor like that, it'll cover so many angles, like three different angles from above, like from your right, and allow you still to look down into the front. Something's definitely like a little underrated. And in that situation, they're using it just to obviously like cover against the walls all around. All right. Again, scouting through cones. No time wasted. Something we see with, again, a lot of the best players in the world. They're always trying to either gather information, heal, look for damage, do something. They're never doing nothing. Uh, outside of if they're sitting in those roofs like we saw in the either region. Again, allows them to scout, go for the Elim. Now they're getting W keyed from above. I think just because they got tagged a little bit, they ended up playing a little slow. Zone pullback has been favorable for them. It's interesting that they just choose to, like, double spray. Please reset that. Thank you. They choose to double spray rather than going for, like, a pre-edit play. Two Jesus, the people in this region are crazy aggressive. Okay, everyone's running in. Okay, he's kind of just left his teammate in the dust, but I like that he decided immediately to elevate there. It's starting to pull back up over hills. If you're on low ground and the zone starts to pull far, immediately trying to find a way to go up, not only go through or around, will always allow you to get a little bit cleaner way through. Jesus, this is so scuffed. Nice. He elevates himself out. That roof's not yours. Please take it. This is so scuffed. Oh my goodness. How did they win this game? <laughs> yeah, this is crazy. Okay, okay, okay. With the max zone, it pulls back again. I'd like... Pulls, uh, sorry, max distance again. So I'd like to see them get ahead as quick as possible. Oh no, it pulls back. Sorry, I'm super dumb. Now they have to fight through all of these awkward old builds. So in this kind of situation, you want to be playing pump out as much as possible, right? Unless you have your old builds. If you're walking through a bunch of other builds that are not yours, you got to play pump out. Sprinting is so risky in these kind of situations. And he's just jumped straight into the box. Okay, I have a feeling... Uh, like this guy's not a bad player. I'm just trying to figure out like what went wrong here. Like, How did they get those two refreshes? Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, they didn't cone on top. Uh, I didn't even see him. Right, okay, okay, okay. Fair enough. To be honest, that is fair enough. That's absolutely fair enough. And then the hurdle. No. <laughs> okay, okay. I got it, I got it, I got it. I, I take my bad words back on Datus. That's very unfortunate. He drops in the box at an angle you can't see. You get out, you auto hurdle, and then die to his teammate on the other side. Like, that's just unlucky. All, all things happening at once. It is what it is. But again, it's like, I don't know. I, I mean, if I'm, if I'm nature from that POV, I'm not sure why he's jumping. I know he's got a gold auto, but like he's jumping straight into a box that has a duo in it. You know, like I know they're scuffed, but I don't think they had that little mats. I could be wrong. I, I didn't see how many they had at that exact moment. But Jesus, that's hell aggressive. If if they had some builds, you know. See, I like the zone tank here. He's got enough medkits to do it. I don't know if uh, LB works. We'll be able to come with him or not. Yeah, he does. Nice. That was really good. They're in a scuffed spot, so they're like they run all the way around. This entire end game has been so scuffed. This is like the kind of end game I play, but die in first moving. The room, man. I like mantling. Uh, hurdling, not so much. Hurdling's just annoying. Let's see, let's see. Getting ahead, getting ahead. It's just been like... It seems like... I'll be real. To me, I see like this didn't have much game plan. You know, obviously they got medkits to win heal off there. And he's just lost the 1v1. But... Uh, yeah, I mean... There wasn't a huge amount to be learned in that game. I will be absolutely honest. Uh, outside of the fact that auto hurdle sucks. There you go. I'm hoping for some high quality, big IQ gameplay from an avid resub enjoyer. That's all I'm going to say. So one thing I want to point out, I said like it's going to be really hard for them to uh, find a bunch more heals. But in these like hot drop spots, is there another one? Like Snooty Steps is another one. I hate that you can't move the map without playing. Yeah. You're always going to find there's like usually some heals lying around there unless there was a ton of people fighting just because all of the drops end up giving you so much more heals than you would normally get in those spots. So there's usually less uh, like more left over. So like identifying hot drops can usually find you a lot more shield somewhere. All right. Rifting to six zone. We love it. Another strategy we've seen from pretty much a lot of teams. And again, same thing as a lot of the other teams going deeper into the this zone. Into full dead side, keeping away from everyone. All right, they've already marked next zone. As soon as that zone appears, the thing is, like, with forecast, you're always you have to get in the kind of mindset of thinking ahead, right? Like, at this point, you could say they could just rotate ahead to that next zone, but then they don't know where the zone is after that, right? So now, as soon as that zone has appeared, now when they're rotating, they know exactly where to position themselves because they know where the ninth zone is as well, right? Let's see where we're going from here. They know where zone is. I want to see the timing. The timing is really interesting because, again, it's one of the two things. You either want to rotate immediately before everyone starts looking or you want to rotate at the same time as everyone else. None of the other two. In between that is always dodgy because there's so many people looking. And I like that they're using the chance that they have to get ahead so they can continually refarm, keep as max mats as possible. Going into moving zones, if you're almost max mats, it's like you've already skipped like one of the most difficult parts of it. They've staggered ahead a bit. Scout height as you go past. See, it's only connected by a few tiles. Tried to slide to keep himself moving there, but uh, just didn't have the forward momentum. Creates enough space. And obviously, they know this next zone, I imagine, is continuing to pull, so they can get ahead. Again, not placing uh, cones on top, so you can edit through the top, so you get better vision. Love it. This team is again connecting themselves in wood. So, uh, as we mentioned with a lot of other ones, you can, a lot of other teams, you already know that chances are that they don't have enough mats to continue hold it. So, you can just start to pressure them. Seems strange that they actually tarped this far in if zone's pulling to the west, but it is what it is. I think they could do a much better job of like aggroing teams. Ooh, that's, that's a risky one. Like, a lot of the teams are. There are a lot of positions where they're kind of just like staggering, doing nothing, in a sense. I need to watch back a lot of those transitions before, but like once they're getting into a position, they could be being a lot more aggressive. Uh, obviously, you have to be careful in the angles and the edits you take and things like that. But it seems like they are just kind of chilling a lot of the time. Which does mi like miss you opportunities for uh, good refreshes. But also, maybe they were just a little bit too aggressive and decided let's not do that anymore. We're making dumb mistakes or something, you know? It's quite common that 
They kind of, teams sometimes go the other way. Splitting the hearts, nice. Pars doing a great job, just continuing tarping ahead. It's a flat ground, so they can stay low ground easily without having to get, like, cut off by anyone. Let's just see. Drops the med kits immediately, okay. Pars is going to go for heal off. Which kind of, which I imagine is just because Backer is the better fragger. It's good, interesting, because they have so many mats, like, they haven't used a grapple blade in a long time. It's just because they've just got such good space down here, right? Yeah, it is interesting that Pars would play... Ooh, get shot straight in the back. I love that Backer goes for, like, a different angle. Because they've obviously... Because Pars done a really good job of tarping them in here. And then Backer takes over. Pars needs to heal. This is, like, a really critical thing that a lot of the top duos just do instinctively, like... Both players can flat frag, both players can like tarp, both players can do everything. And it's like a more of a question of when do you overtake. Ooh, lovely. Really small thing there. But he single pickaxe swing, took out his uh, pump because like the, the ramp flip was so obvious. Small, I would be dead there. I'd make that mistake. I'd be ramp flipped on immediately. It's really easy just to overextend. Like these are like the small little creative mechanics that when you come to play end game scenarios, Having that muscle memory really adds up. Nice. Nice try and peek. From a good angle too, doesn't like fully overextend straight into the box. He's like keeping his distance. Again, he's taking over. Only two medkits for the win. Teams are fighting up above so they know they can look up and spray because no one's looking at them. No one's spraying them back down. Nice. And it's literally just a... Now there's the 2v1. Oh, Baka goes up. Risky. Risky to, like, ha hardcore focus the finish so much there. What, what just happened? So Jagvir dies. And then I think... Let me, let me go... Let me hit the little wide. I think right here... Pars... With... Oh, he has literally no belts. Okay, I take it back. He has zero. I think... Hmm. That's, an, that's a difficult question, actually. Because the question is like, if you were the if you were powers in this situation, right? Let me make sure the camera is set up correctly. You have no mats. He hasn't looked up in a second to know what's going on. I don't know if Baka is calming that he's like fighting him, or that he's not looking down and focused at him. But this is like a chokeable position here, right? Because if school at this sit drops down, he can one pump powers, and then it's a one v one, right? And he has the mats there. Uh, so, like, this kind of hyper-focused of Pars, like, rather than looking up here, he's, you know, looking down at the body. Obviously, that gives him the mats, which could potentially win them the game. But that's that that was a hella risky play, I'm not gonna lie. And then... And then does he just drop down to win? What, what happens? Oh, Baka dies. Wait. I think he, then he just dies. I think School just dies to zone there. Yeah. That was a very close to choked game. Could have been choked. The really nice side of that. I like, their, their tarping and their chemistry is really, really good. Hazy Hillside. I'm yet to see a winner of a region land hill hazy. <laughs> so, if you didn't know, this is something that I, I said last week. But I don't know if many people have noticed this or not, right? I don't, I don't think Epic's noticed this yet. For some reason, in tournaments, these vaults are never locked. Like, the door just isn't there. Like, the bot is still here. And if you kill them, the... the what do you call it? Um... The key card will drop, but it doesn't open anything because this is already open. So in drop spots like this, you can just jump straight down into the vault and grab the loot. Oh, we love a good bang. Another one. Ooh, beautiful. Okay, this guy is banging with the snipe. Again, same kind of loadouts we talked about earlier where we have one player carrying double heals with med kits and bigs, uh, both grapplers, and then one sniper and the, what do you call him? And the fizz. This is again what, you know, this is the, what I would classify as the Queasy Thomas HD loadout. Double grapplers. Uh, best player in the world right now? Uh, Vito. Ooh! Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Although this awareness is not great. Nice. Beautiful snipe. This Phantom about to just r leave his boy. Oh my god, he has so many medallions as well. <laughs> okay. Three medallions off the rip. Because I know Kai and Phantom are like insanely aggressively W keyers. So it's quite good to get one of them out of your lobby, you know? 
and um, insta boxes and crouches next to him. They kind of just willy nilly go. Again, the base standard for rotations, they rotate exactly as the zone starts to close. Building in wood as they land is pretty risky because you end up wasting so many. Everyone, every time like people build in wood, they think it's efficient, right? It's like, oh, I'm just using a little bit of wood. But if you ever have the risk of getting boxed up like that, you get sprayed wasting more mats, right? So it's like a lot of times just not even worth it. Are we going to get another back zone snipe? No. Again, this is something that's really good to do if you're staggered ahead of zone, right? Because everyone rotates as soon as the zones start to move, by staying back a little bit, you can get easy refreshes by beaming people in the back when they grapple blade. The problem with this is, if you do it on a low layer, you can easily get held. So if you're going to do a strat like that, you typically want to stay on a higher layer because then you have a less chance of being held by the entire lobby. Double team. Nice timing on the double spray. You might think, what is that other team doing? Like, L ears. Um... But the reality there is that it's so hard to hear if you're spraying as well. Even in like not an endgame, it's hard to hear people spraying in your back if you're shooting at the same time. So they timed that really nicely. Now they're using one of the medkits. They picked up another one, so it should be okay. And they've actually ended up just wasting the medkit there as well. So didn't even use it properly. Don't pop another one, please. Nice, okay. Grab a front side. Awkward landing. Satami... So dunks on a player. I like how he instantly gets out of the box because he's weak and he doesn't know where the duo is. Can't find the body. There's the duo. He, his instinct there was to go for an insta edit, which is hella risky. This guy is lost. <laughs> that guy's in his box just... Spinning around like a kebab, man. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Oh... Alright. Eight Elims is kind of nuts. This guy, is, the time his aim is really good. Obviously, the sniper early was crazy. Guys in wood down below, so easy sprays. I guess, like, this is just a heal off loss. Like, they just don't have set up to win this game. They're just, like, fully fragging out. This is a, this is a very, um... A very, like, Middle Eastern game, I would say. You know? Very messy. A lot of Elims. A lot of just like wall-to-wall -wall pumps out. Not a lot of strategy, which I think I already said twice, but I think that should be reiterated. But the region is for the most part like very, very aggressive, you know? But it does go to show like if you're, you know, if you're a good fighter, you can really get far. Like they, obviously they won, won this region. Nice. But risky at it. And it's like, yeah, they're, they're just not winning this game, you know? No heals. Team's on height. This guy's got four med kits. Like, he's just lost his duel. He's getting sprayed out. It doesn't matter. He can run back. He can play heal off because these guys have literally no med or two. Oh, they do two. Sorry, two med kits and low whites. Like, <laughs> oh, Satami, no, no. He was just about to win the game there. One more pump. One more HP, and he survives that. But no, he dies. But yeah, very messy game. Uh, from these guys all together. Not set up for med kit. They just, there was a med kit there, but I guess you just can't risk it. Yeah, and it's wraps. It's just over there. But again, good game.